Many thanks for joining us on the newsroom on TV to our sixth in Nigeria. I'm Tamilora Akinkolie. And these are the headlines we're following at the moment. The contract for phase two of the Red Rail Line on the Lagos Rail Mass Transit has been signed. Governor Babaji Dil Songwolu said that due to financial constraint, the second phase will stretch from Oyingbo to the National Theatre instead of the marina as initially planned. The governor said this at the commissioning of the Red Rail Line train in Lagos by President Tinobu. The Lagos State Strategic Transport Master Plan that outlines what those integrated rail system stood for, which are six rail corridors, one Molo Rail, 14 BRT corridors, and over 20 water routes on vast network of what is today the tiniest, smallest state in our country called Lagos State. We are indeed happy that that master plan is alive, is working, and all successive governments from my brother, Baba Tunuraji Fashola, to my other brother, Akiyumi Ambode, and to our humble administration, I've kept faith with it. For the first time in the history of Lagos, we have a system comprising and integrating three modes of transportation. The road, which is the BRT that we're using, the rail, which is the rail master transit program, and the waterways through the statewide ferry service. Every day, millions and millions of Lagosians cross this integrated urban transportation infrastructure, uniting them into a world-class digital payment platform. Today, Mr. President, we have designed locally a cowrie card that over 4.2 million Lagosians have in their hand. This integration that has achieved the means of transportation means that every card carrying, card, Kauri card carrying member can choose either to travel on a BRT bus, can choose to travel on any of our ferry services, can also choose to travel on our rail infrastructure. This is a platform that is working and is working well in Lagos. The Senate has confirmed four out of five nominees as members of the Board of Directors of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Initially, the candidates built to appear before the upper chamber were five. However, the Chairman of Senate's Committee on Banking, Assurance and Other Financial Institutions, Senator Adeto Kumbabi, in a report, explained that only four out of the five nominees had appeared for screening exercise. And the United States government has said it invested over $600 million in health assistance in Nigeria in 2023 as part of Nigeria's U.S. partnership on health assistance. The health assistance includes provision of about $83 million in certified-treated bed net, $22 million malaria preventive treatment in pregnancy, $164 million faxed at malaria medicines and in certified to spray 121,000 homes. It added that over 162 million rapid diagnostic tests for malaria were administered while an estimated 2 million people who live with HIV in Nigeria out of 39 million people live with HIV globally are receiving health assistance. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAVDUC, has warned medicine vendors operating in open drug markets nationwide to prepare for immediate relocation to the Coordinated Wholesale Center, CWC, in their respective cities once it becomes operational. The agency said the move became important because the open drug market is a major source of substandard and falsified medicines in the country. And on business, the federal government has announced that about $22.82 billion is expected to be invested in 1,068 oil and gas projects approved between 2022 and 2023. This announcement was made during a panel session at the 7th Nigeria International Energy Summit in Abuja, where the spotlight was on Nigeria's journey to maximizing its oil production potential. The Chief Executive Officer of Nigeria Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission, Minga Komolafe, during the discussion, further shared insight into Nigeria's strategy to align closer to the oil production quota set by the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC. 
And on the global scene, the United States has frowned on the new anti-LGBTQ law in Ghana. On Wednesday, Ghana's parliament passed a new bill opposing the rights of care persons and proposing a prison sentence of up to five years for willful promotion of LGBTQ activities. The bill also proposes a jail term of up to 10 years for anyone involved in LGBTQ advocacy campaign aimed at children. And finally on sports, Saudi Arabia's football governing body has suspended Cristiano Ronaldo for one game over a gesture he made on the pitch last weekend that was judged as a provocation. The Saudi Arabian Football Federation said the earnest sir captain and former Porto star was also fined a total of $8,000 for the move, which broke rules against provoking the public during a match. According to the Federation, the decision cannot be appealed. And that's all on the newsroom. Many thanks for watching. I'm Tamilore Akin Kulie. Bye for now.